Welcome back, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for taking a little time to spend a little time with me. And as you can see, guys, playing a solo challenge here. And I thought this was the perfect time to show you guys, you know, how I play, my play calls and things like that. You know, a lot of times you hear people say, you know, what is a sim gamer? You know, you get that a lot from guys who, you know, compete in tournaments or guys who are more of a freestyle type. And I think, you know, there's a misconception, so to speak, in terms of what a sim player is, because I think... You know, the tourney guys a lot of times, you know, run into sim Nazis. So they get, uh, you know, a bad indication or a bad impression of what a sim gamer is. So I said, why not? Why not take the time right here while I'm doing a solo challenge to show you guys my plays and things like that and try to give you some insight. So basically, guys, as you see, you know, scrolling through the playbook, I try to call plays that, you know, I think are going to work based on personnel, based on situation. And basically, you know, when I say I play a sim style, you know, I'm trying to take advantage of matchups more so than taking advantage of an exploit. And that's basically it in a nutshell. You know, I know a lot of times people talk about going for it on fourth down and things like that. I've always said, you know, going for it on fourth down should be up to you. You know, it's just to me, it doesn't make sense. The mentality of, you know, someone who would go for it from their own 10 yard line in the third quarter and it's fourth and 12 i just don't understand that now true indeed i do understand in a situation where you know some guys feel like they you know they're confident about their offense and they have a play that they know is going to work I mean, it is what it is you know if you're competing for money or what have you i can't tell you how to play you know i really can't but basically i don't play like that you know i had a guy tell me in the comments you know, hey, this is Mutt, man. I know you don't like going for it on fourth down, but this is ultimate team. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? You know, that doesn't mean I'm going to play like that. You know, obviously, you just saw me go for it there on the fourth and two because this is a solo challenge. You know, it started here in the fourth quarter, so I have to keep the drive going. But if this was an ordinary game, you know, a, a season's game or a head-to-head -head CFM game, I wouldn't go for it in that situation because I would feel comfortable you know, I could punt. Now, again, even if this wasn't a solo challenge and this situation is fourth down, you're down by two, of course you go for it. That's not what I'm saying. But like I said, man, giving you the best example is what I said a few moments ago. You know, a guy who would go for it on fourth and 20 or fourth and 10 or whatever it might be from their own 10 to 15 or even 20 yard line. Don't really understand that. So, guys, let's go ahead and sit back and watch what I'm doing again. I'm caught in a situation where I have to go forward here, fourth and five, and nice matchup right there. You remember, guys, what I said. You know, I know uh, Andre Johnson is going to be a nice matchup inside in the three spot, you know, playing inside basically more of a slot type position instead of him being on the outside, and it's working well for me. All right, so we got the ball here now on the 46, and we have to at least get in field goal range. And again, as you can see, you know, I pull the play calls back, looking at some of the, you know, hot routes or audibles, I guess you would call them, and seeing, you know, where I can get my matchups. You know, some people don't do it a lot, but I use the matchup stick quite often. You see me do it a little bit here in this game, but, you know, I don't do it. I'm not showing you as much of it here in this particular footage, but I do it a lot, you know, to see where the matchups are. And I don't think guys really take advantage of that the way they should. You know, does it work 100%? I don't know. You know, is it foolproof? I, again, I don't know. I have no idea how efficient it really is, but it seems to work in, in favor of me at times when I use it. So, again, right now, you know, I'm trying to catch him in a situation where I could run Julio Jones across the middle, but I'm looking at this comeback route. And right there, you know, I still went to Julio Jones, but I always look at the comeback route on the outside right there. If it's one on one, if I think it's a good situation, I go there. You know, a lot of people ask me, do you actually go through your reads or are you just, you know, throwing to the open guy when the play, you know, wants to play evolves? I'm like, no. Right now, I already know right now where my target is where my matchup is you know who's a guy i think has the most favorable matchup who i'm going to target like right now i'm gonna look for the tight end that's gonna run that post corner and basically that's the route i'm gonna look for also look for the other tight end streaking down the middle of the field right there unfortunately i'm able to come up with the catch but that was a good shot to take down field right there especially if you have a matchup situation you know imagine that being somebody like a gronkowski you might come up with that one. You might win that battle. So those are the things I look for. You know, I look at the first read and I have the first, you know, 
first two reads are already preset. I know my number one, I know my number two, and then I start looking for the third and fourth, you know, right away. And and much like, you know, how it actually happens in the real NFL, I would assume as a quarterback, I try to make these reads very quickly. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I try to make them very quick. It's not like, you know, I'm dropping back 15 yards or what have you and then trying to decide who's open. No, I'm looking very quick, like, first glance, number one, number two. If they're not open, then I look at the three. And sometimes you never get to the fourth guy, you know, depending on formation and things of that nature. But right there, again, you saw that comeback. I told you guys I was looking for the comeback earlier. Right there was a perfect opportunity. I knew I was going to have something right there. Matchup worked for me, makes a catch, and now right now, you know, we're in the timeout situation. We let the clock click down, um, you know, down to three seconds, and we're going to go ahead and walk away with a field goal. So that's basically how I play, guys. Again, a sim player, we mainly just try to play, I don't want to say <laughs> real football, because, of course, there's offenses in the NFL that, you know, could you really say it's real football, quote-unquote? You have the right to play however you want to play. But I'm just talking about, you know, a sim guy is more so going to play to the strengths of actual matchups, you know, uh, versus their opponent, whether it's CPU or a live opponent, instead of, you know, exploiting things in the game that you know is overpowered or unstoppable, or whatever the case may be. Again, this is not me bashing the way anyone plays. Just trying to bring some clarity, man, as far as what a sim guy you know thanks or what we're thinking as we're playing the game you know just try to clear that up a little bit like i said a lot of misconception out there you know i think there are some sim nazis out there that give a bad representation of you know a person like myself you know sim minded gamer how we basically think and play is definitely not as much or as stringent as those guys make it seem so that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. More footage will be up on Wednesday. Leave your thoughts, leave your comments, and I promise it won't hurt you to hit that like button. Peace. Once again, guys, thanks for coming by. And if you want to interact with me live, head on over to Sim Standard Radio every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, along with Smitty and Azure Effect. The call-in number for the show is down in the description. Now, of course, for more content, go ahead and click the link above. And before you go, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. All right, guys. Until next time, lights out.